Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here this sort of a new video in Tierno the Last of Europe in which we're playing as Phyllis Schleife, but I've already done our first focus, the Schleife Presidency. This administration is historic, not as a liberal suggest because we're the first Catholic woman to stand in the Oval Office. Patriotic Americans are beyond that kind of pointless box checking, no. What is historic about this administration is that it represents the first time in years the American people have not been robbed of the constitutional birthright to presidential choice. It's the first time their opinions have been dictated to them the same way as an Italian dressmaker dictates the length of a woman's skirt. Even as the liberal press whine and agitate against us, even as knowing nothing intellectuals express concern over a political program, the Schleife administration will not falter. We'll see America return to its traditions. OG victory over the liberals, the homosexuals, anti-family activists, and foreign tyrants who threaten the future of our Judeo-Christian civilization. God wills it. A choice, not an echo. When people voted for us, they wanted a radical change, not just the image or impression of it, but a tangible reform. They wanted something different from the discredited half-measure people like Richard Nixon and Robert McNamara. They wanted to choose real conservatives who would stand up to fight for a Christian civilization against those radicals determined to heathenize our children certain America's prosperity to German and Japanese tyrants. We are those fighters. We're that choice. We will not be like previous administrations who sought consensus, but instead preserve our nation's strength by appointing and confirming no one but the most uncompromising conservatives. These true believers will guarantee that a government can protect American families against a radical liberal base. Uh, Phyllis Schleife inaugurated its president of the U.S. In a ceremony that observers are calling surreal, the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court swore today in Phyllis Schleife as president of the U.S. Schleife, after a day of prayers led by Reverend Jerry Falwell and Cardinal Terrence Cook, delivered a dark address denouncing the would-be grave diggers of our republic and all those seeking to undermine our defense and our civilization's traditional Judeo-Christian family values. She then left for the White House with her husband and children to celebrate. The reaction to the spectacle overseas has been mixed, but it sparked even more controversy domestically. While the American right wing is jubilant, a sense of fear and unease has taken root within the left and center. Don't tell what this radical president's plan. There she is, Miss America, the inauguration of Phyllis Schleife. Mr. Chief Justice, members of uh, U.S. Congress, and distinguished guests and uh, fellow citizens, for almost 200 years, the American Republic and its God-given Constitution has served as a beacon to the nations of the other world. While the nations crumble from war, poverty, and the loss of moral character, America stood strong. The democratic Judeo-Christian values of its people have seen this country through storm after storm, struggle after struggle. But now we face a new crisis, one that cuts to the heart of our nation. For almost a generation, and, uh, until today at least, the American people have been robbed of the constitutional birthright to a presidential choice. Instead of receiving candidates who represented the culture and traditions, a small group of radical elites foisted upon American halfwits and layabouts would be gravediggers of our republic. These secret kingmakers, living in the million dollar mansions in New York and Washington, dictated to America who could and could not represent it. They did this so that they might reap the rewards of government while the people pay for their excesses. They hollowed out America's cities and turned them into the dens run by thugs and gangs, trapping families into squalor and endless poverty. Good God fearing families saw their neighborhoods transformed into ghettos by so called do gooders, so the kingmakers, so the factories to hostile foreign interests, saw their boys sent off to die in pointless foreign entanglements. But the people finally rebelled, just as they did in 1776, and I'm here to show that the rebellion lives on in the annals of history. So as long as they hold this office, I'll work to preserve our civilization's traditional values, a dark and strange address, morning in America. As before the dawn, when Phyllis Schleife rose from her bed in the executive residence, she showed, showered, and dressed in a slim-fitting baby blue dress that had been laid out in the morning before. She applied makeup and styled her hair, then she removed a single, single gold eagle from her bureau and pinned it to her collar. Phyllis stood in silence, staring at herself in the mirror, listening to the breathing of her sleeping husband. For a moment, she just a moment, she saw herself as she was. She let her see herself not merely as a wife and mother, but as the President of the United States. Her husband gave a loud snore. Phyllis wiped her eyes and strode from the bedroom into the kitchen. She gave a polite greeting to the servants, already preparing breakfast for her and her family, and then turned around to the morning papers to lay it out across the countertop. Every front page reflected her face back at her. Every headline had some coy remark about her appearance or gender. She pursed her lips as someone poured her coffee. Undoubtedly, the liberal press all saw her as a novelty. They spent the entire campaign mocking and dismissing her, insisting that she and her supporters were a silly and backwards minority. Now that she had entered the office, the liberal elites had turned into insisting she would never tame the beast that was the federal government, and would be forced to moderate a platform. How wrong they were. She let her husband enter the room and behind her and kissed her gently on her neck. She turned her to look at him, and then outside of the rising sun, it was a new day in America. We'll make America stronger, prouder, and better. A message from Kennedy to his successor, because we went from two terms of RFK to Kennedy. Or not to Schleife. Kennedy to Schleife. Ms. Schleife. It is traditional for each outgoing president to provide a successor with a brief letter, instilling in them some great wisdom about what it means to be president of the United States. I decided to excuse this practice, not because you would ignore it, though I am sure you would, but because I believe in you are believe you are beyond help. No president has been in, as inexperienced as you are. None have ever been so lacking in basic moral character. You'll be a terrible president at the worst and most dangerous in modern times. You'll be worse than Nixon, worse than Hoover, and your legacy will be one of pain and suffering. You represent the words of our nation and our Catholic faith. If you had any decency at all, you would resign your office. Knowing that you do not, however, I will do all I can to ensure your time in the White House is brief. It's indicative of the writer's character and disposed unceremoniously. Yeah, that's pretty bad by RFK. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, no more feminist fantasies. No more shackling enterprises. There's a cult in Washington, a cult with the more dangerous and fanatical adherence than any church. It's a cult of the big government. 
Generations of bureaucrats, union leaders, and establishment politicians have built altars to this new Baal and sacrificed workers and job creators alike on them. Their weapon of choice, regulation, red tape, paperwork. Using the extraordinary authority presented to the Treasury Bureau of the Treasury's Bureau of the Budget, President Schleifer will announce a complete and total freeze on all pending regulations. She will then order new appointees to go through the Federal Register with a fine tuned comb, systematically rolling back and dismantling the unconstitutional rules used to harass corporations and their union bosses. The process will be long and hard, but I have no doubt Schleifer will abolish the regulatory state. Cool. If you heard about tree report returning, please go ahead. At the end of an arrow. Oh, you can read that. There you go. And we have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm. The first Schleifer cabinet. They just, just do this anyways. Uh, a lot of MPP unaffiliated, General Maxwell Taylor. Uh, so here's if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. National Security Advisor, Sing Lao, huh? Young, uncompromising conservatives. On ease within the establishment grows. Well, who likes the establishment? I'm meeting with the president. National Chair, Party Chairman, Blank, was in his office holding a jar of jam. It's not a frequent occurrence for him. He didn't go to meetings with the president expecting her to hand him a jar of congealed fruit, but that was apparently how Phil Schleffi operated. She brought dishes that she claimed that she made herself alongside a handwritten card. It would be a tactic she learned as an activist to go away to get people off balance. Uh, the person set the jar down and picked up a sheet of paper from his desk, trying to regain control of the meeting. Uh, let's move on to business. Some in the caucus have expressed concern about any few of the names you've been submitted for the Senate confirmed post. Pat Robertson, Jesse Helms, Anita Bryant. She looked up. You want to put the, the orange juice spokeswoman in a senior position at the Department of Health, Justice and Welfare? Phyllis Schleffi dressed in a bright red dress nodded. She has a strong, deeply felt commitment to child well-being. My concern is that what you're doing is going to rile people up. Don't get me wrong, I can't lean on people to get the votes, but this is not a way to win allies in Congress or in the press. Christ, most voters are still expecting you to pivot to the center. A flat smile spread across Schleffi's face. If the opposition wants to reveal themselves as opponents of decency and advocates of deviancy, then they're welcome to do that. I certainly won't compromise on her values. She pretended to look at her watch and rose to her feet. I'm afraid that I'll need to go. Please do remind her allies that we need people who can fight for the future in our country. She paused at the door and turned back. Oh, and just let me know how you like the jam. What just happened? Uh, restoring American competitiveness. Growth increased by 1.25%. Destroying the culture of dependency. One less dependent. Uh, let's go with this one. Destroying American competitiveness. Phyllis Schleffi asks, who is it that really benefits from free trade? Is it American businesses whose goods must compete in an international marketplace or rely on German slavery? Is it uh, American workers who have to watch as their jobs and factories are stolen by the corrupt and dishonest regimes in Asia and Latin America? Does it benefit the public who must submit to the rules and regulations enforced by the foreign tribunals? <clears throat> None of these groups reap the rewards of free trade because free trade is not built for them. Free trade is built to benefit exactly one group, the international financial elite, the kingmakers. Today we will take the first step to restore our sovereignty. We will return to our practices of our founding fathers who understand that a protected market was unnecessary for innovation, national security, and way of life. We will issue a new executive order reimposing and strengthening tariffs on all those countries outside the OFM. God willing, we will one day convince Congress to reimpose tariffs within this alleged alliance as well. One more proposition, if you already that, let's go conservative principles. Secretary James Buckley had a great appreciation for the many rooms of the U.S. Treasury building. <clears throat> Their ornate furnishings had the capacity to stimulate the soul. They made a feel kinship with the leaders of the ages past that had tried to control the largesse of the federal government. As he stepped into the boardroom and greeted the career employees waiting for him, he felt determined to prove himself worthy of membership in that august line. After many smiles, Buckley said, spoken in his unplaceable accent. I was hoping I might entrust the great minds of this room with a task, as you know. The President has correctly analyzed that we're suffering from too much government by a process of reevaluating the regulatory process, policies of past administrations, and identifying those that overstepped. She seeks to reverse the historic flow of power to Washington. How many days do you think it might take to assemble a list of these types of errant regulations from across the federal government? <clears throat> the bureaucrats looked at one another. Mr. Secretary, you're talking about every regulation across the federal government? That's decades of work by dozens of agencies. Even starting with all, even starting will take months, if not easiest flipping a switch. Yes, of course, you're right. You do, after all, have experience in areas where I, I'm afraid, am but a lowly uh, newcomer. Buckley was self-depreciatory, self depreciatory but the other man could tell he was embarrassed. But we must move fast. We must challenge the way things have always been done. We can remove layers of review and evaluation, but there's so many interdependencies that can be undesirable. There could be undesirable side. Well, it sounds like you haven't figured out, the gentlemen. We must move quickly, even if we make a few mistakes along the way. Before they could say into the word, the secretary treated to his office. <clears throat> Not, no more America last. Every newspaper, every newscast on radio and TV testifies to the failures of the godless, well-financed New York kingmakers that have controlled our generation's foreign policy for a generation. Despite decades of senseless internationalism, Americans are today the most hated people on the planet. The kingmakers have given away their money and their soldiers lived lives to foreign leaders determined to drag down American flag, confiscate American property, and humiliate American citizens. No more. As long overdue, though, we trust these liberal policies to defeat and failure, starting with the boondoggle that is Organization Free Nations. Over the coming weeks, we'll call together our so-called allies and inform them that their days of freeloading off the American people so are, is at an end. They can start paying up. Start supporting America unequivocally. Or you can find themselves standing alone. Round two. Well, if you want to be up to uh, round two, please go right ahead. We'll see what happens. They might go for it, they might not, but. Expanding the arsenal. 
The atomic bomb's a marvelous gift that was given to our country by a wise god, but the kingmakers just don't understand that. They just like generations of the pieces before them foolishly naively want a nation to defend itself with one hand tied behind our back. They want us to limit our nuclear capacity, while every day the Germans and Japanese build vastly more powerful bombs, subs, and aeroplanes to wipe out our cities with zero warning. We're going to let these empires obtain the massive superiority they need to treat us the way they treated Poland and China. It's high time to expand our arsenal as a warning against aggressors. It's our time that we delegate nuclear control to allow our commanders in the field the freedom to defend our nation, God willing, by any means necessary. But, uh, let's see, call, call bluff. Let's hear the good news first, said President Schleifi to the Situation Room. The Secretary of State spoke up unprompted. There's one, then it's that Tokyo didn't shut the whole thing down right there and then there. After B, he said, my colleagues in the Prime Minister's cabinet ostensibly convinced him not to. That just means the Japs didn't roll over the slightest touch near the Chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff. Akasha has scanned the Secretary Room from top to top bottom as if searching for ex us, his excuses to exploit. I'd have thought the count was bad news. It means the Empire is willing to stick with what we've negotiated thus far, despite my error menu, the people's wishes, maybe even its own governments. So that's really bad news then? Cut to the chase, Mr. Secretary. Where do you really stand? Us for them. Gentlemen, the President's ch chastisement broke through their long, simmering argument, tampering with the, di with the dignitas her office afforded. Having prevented accusations of treason from being actioned, she was the Secretary to back out of the negotiations himself, America's sixth plan. I agree to the, the lenient terms. Made in America. Plumley, L. H. Ladd Plumley, President of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, had been on the phone all day. He had been fielding calls from the press who wanted a statement on uh, Shafi's Sh tariffs. No comment. Then he'd been answering angry calls from members furious about the sudden and steep increase in the costs. We're exploring options. They'd been stuck waiting for the White House switchboard to place his call to the Oval Office. When I was been about to hang up, Plumley heard a voice say, Transferring you over now, followed by a click. Instead of Shafi's high pitched voice, a man with a slight southern drawl answered, Hello, Ms. Plum Mr. Plumley. This is Pat Buchanan, special assistant to the President. How can I help you? Plumley frowned, hoping it would be translated through the wire. Um, sorry, Mr. Buchanan. I was hoping to talk with the President directly about the recent tariffs you've been pushing. He showed off, but kind of said nothing. It's hurting American commerce. We we're, were nothing but supportive of the President thus far, and it's a little outrageous that this has sprung on us. I don't know how it would have been sprung up on you when it was a core part of the President's platform, said Buchanan in a harsh voice. Plumley opened her mouth to object to ask who could have expected her to follow through, but Buchanan pressed on. There's no American sovereignty without American industry. Should not let plants be shut down so some Wall Street investment bankers can, be, can profit from Japanese and German uh, exploitation? Plumley spider outrage, what are you supposed to do? Use some of that money you tucked away to wean yourself off that dependence on trade. Make it something in America every once in a while. Goodbye, sir. The line went dead. Challenging the White House consensus. Uh, I'm not sure how. I'm filled. Import request for chromium. Oh. Well, it doesn't really matter. From the pulpit. Oh, let's go there too. Oh, she passed by your money lap your head. Secretary Fowlwell strolled on the stage with a bottomless comment, as trailed by the party of word diplomats. The Secretary of State's unannounced appearance confused everyone at the Open Summit, but most of his own staff, who refused to brief on even the slightest detail of his visit. Rather than endless applause, Fowlwell only received a smattering of weak claps and hush hushed murmurs as all the OFM waited to see what the new envoy was thinking. If Fowlwell was offended by their reception, he refused to show up. Out of the crowd, suddenly clutched his podium and began, America is unlike the Japanese, unlike the German thugs, unlike many nations of the world, a Christian nation. Since the first Americans stepped off the Mayflower, America stood as a beacon of Judeo-Christian values. Yet you've misjudged us, family of nations. You may have taken our kindness for foolishness. You may have misjudged our past leaders as weak and exploitable. And exploitable. But those men did not speak for American worker, farmer, or leader, and the average American demands change. So, before we continue, I'm expecting more. I expect you to be upstanding in every sense. I expect you to pay up. If you wish to receive the benefits of this alliance, I will not be some one sided it will not be one sided affair. It will be two way street. If you choose to follow America in this matter, you will steal the protection of the minister of God. If you choose to fail this covenant, you may expect some dark days ahead. The room was deathly quiet, save for the unhappy repetition from the Spanish and Dutch translators. Fall well stood up from his podium stridently, smiling at a crowd which he had deeply misread as he awed. Behind him, his staff glanced at each other and cringed in embarrassment. For people will be lovers of self. Handling the betrayers. <clears throat> Who are the keys kingmakers, people ask? These betrayers, uh, grave diggers, oh, my apologies about that. Who would like nothing more than see America surrender to the criminal fascists and communist regimes of the world. They are the carrot carrying liberals. They are the feckless, ooh, look at that, nice, uh, elites. Like former Secretary Robert S. McNamara, whose disastrous strategic policies have made America a whipping boy in international relations. At least this loyal technocrats must go. Anyone who has ever worked with McNamara, anyone who has ever betrayed America's defense or sought to undermine her sovereignty will be purged from the federal workforce. It doesn't matter how minor they are, how loud the media complains, they can be no place for betrayers and the go people's government. End of an era, huh? Kick up a storm and exacerbate social tensions? Well, weird to have a crap ton of social tensions anyway, as it is. Strike from space. 
Secretary of Defense Maxwell Taylor, I never felt so comfortable among the President and her ilk. The people she brought into the government were too young, too inexperienced. Most of the senior defense department appointees had no background in defense, and many un under Secretary Howard Phillips, chief among them, seemed to have more allegiance to the White House than himself. So he could not disguise a shock when a fully typed directive with his name in the def de Defense Department's seal slid across the desk. He glanced at the subject line, authority to use order to use of nuclear weapons, and Phillips... W what's this? Oh, said Phillips, given the directive as much importance as you might a grocery list. I thought you'd been looped in on this. The president wants to empower commanders in the field, deter aggression, that sort of thing, he shrugged. And we can't exactly pledge to stop foreign wars, but we aren't prepared to use every means and then when they occur. Taylor sputtered, baffled, as he, of all people, is playing the bleeding heart. Do, do we not have an obligation to expose our troops and non-combatants to... He couldn't finish. You know, the president is of the opinion that the responsibility of decent civilized people to take the necessary means, including force, to protect us from criminals. You might call it a Christian duty, flashed a smile. The word peace has become so perverted that people think it requires us to renounce capabilities and commit national suicide. The only way to deter aggressors is to show that we're willing to use nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons for self-defense. Taylor rubbed his temples. If the president already committed to this policy, he told himself, that he might as well as it, might as well as implement it himself, too. For Cardinal Jurnet, we can hope to not use them unless we actually re are ready to use them. No more feminist fantasies. We have the distinct privilege of living in a civilization that respects the families of basic human society. This respect defines every aspect of our lives. Men, women, men and work and go to war. Women and their children manage the household. It's natural. It's effective. It's a way of life that's under assault by equal rights fanatics. And states across this great nation were afflicted with aggressive, unmarried feminists, or females, that are anti-family, anti-children, pro-abortion. With a high-pitched whining and powerful connections, they are forcing school districts to carry curriculums that promote militant homosexuality and denigrate our founding fathers. To counteract this unprecedented assault on the American family, the Schleif administration is prepared to sign a simple executive order. No federal funding for states that indoctrinate their children with anti-American ideas. I see all the liberals like it. Safe, not sorry. I understand. Did I do something wrong? The secretary just decided on a bit of reorganization to promote organizational efficiency. Uh, <clears throat> I have a bit of housekeeping. Someone with your resume should have the language behind a desk in the Pentagon. No, what we're offering is an opportunity to represent America on the front lines and through aware. Under, Deputy Undersecretary for the Administration, Howard Phillips, did not get any further in his pitch before the man in front of him broke down sobbing. Please, you can't. I've, I've worked in the strategic planning for over a decade. I do good work. Great. Fat tears cascaded down his face. Please, I have a family in Fairfax. I just can't uproot them to Greenland. I, I can't. It's just not fair. Well, we'll be awful, uh, awful sorry to lose you, but if you don't want to accept this opportunity, you're welcome to submit your resignation. I reached down and removed a single slip of paper from the sack to sign on the slime. The analyst stared at him with a mix of anguish and credulity. Howard stared back without compassion. He was going to do his duty to his country, to his president. He was rooting out the internationals that had wasted so much treasure and so many lives and senseless adventures abroad, and soon they would be all sent away from Washington and government altogether. America would be cleansed of the defeatists and its institutions remade under the watchful eyes of conservative, God-fearing patriots. You would, of course, receive a generous severance package, Howard added. He stood the paper across the table and waited. The galleries become a poisonous dagger, with which one party stabs the other in the back. Watch his politics. Preserving one's right. The liberals know no decency. Conspiring with liberal governors and activist judges, these shrill, masculine-hating malcontents have secured an injunction against their executive order. In magazines like Miss, Women, and Ebony, they are celebrating how they have forced us to continue financing their total assault on family, marriage, and children. When all these radical liberals denigrate wives and mothers in the American way, we not allow them to trade our birthright away for the hollow promise of equality. Why well, are the best lawyers possible and pour all the resources in defending our policies? If we need to appeal all the way to the Supreme Court, we'll see our Judeo-Christian civilization and women's place in it prevail. The Press Conference Phyllis Schleffield was on TV, Phyllis Schleffield was on every television. Her image in the crowd glowed on a million screens, the green of her dress, matched green of Coolidge High School's campus, where she'd organized a press conference. I just left a meeting of the school board at a high school in our nation's capital, said the secretary's blurry image. Young parents' image of a kind of long-haired urban liberalism stood with their hands on their hips. I regret to say the meeting was shocking, an outrage. Led by anti-family activists, a school, like many across this nation, has sourced a political agenda down the throats of her children. Although the president's voice was outraged, murmuring. They are promoting ideas that denigrate our founding fathers that promote sexual education. Angry throngs press inward. The camera's got Secret Service agents holding people back. What we're witnessing is not normal disagreement about educational content. content. What we're witnessing is a war to destroy the values in which this nation was founded, values built on the word of God that produced the greatest good for the greatest number of people in the history. Now we're told by liberals that they are barriers. While well, I take them at the word where they want to remove barriers, they want to remove barriers the same way. Someone might remove barriers from the top of a skyscraper's observation deck before throwing off others. They'll cast their children into the hands of deviants and pro communist groups. They don't know decency, and that's why I'm immediately cutting funding. She got no further. For the TV crowd, someone threw a shoe. Woman cursed. You effing witch, I'll burn you at the stake. Others screamed. Other words and shoved aside reporters. As agents hustled Schleffy from the riot, a keen eyed viewer might have caught something flash across the president's face and smiled. Sure, the average American or won't be convinced by that debate or debacle. Sure, the courts will suffer, right? End of an era. Before we enter the office, America was dying. It's still had been tainted by the policies of a liberal failure, policies stretching back to the socialist demagogue FDR. It was this policies of internationals that weakened America before the Second World War. A so called New Deal that turned America into a nation of squalid beggars willing to prostitute themselves for the highest bidder. Our next handout. 
I was a social engineer that enabled the moral atrocities of taxpayer funded birth control, flagrant homosexuality, and pro communist social movement. His areas have taken his anti family policies to the next logical conclusion. In states across the nation, they've not just legalized but subsidized the unjust killing of unborn babies. What's it come to? Are we to watch them as America engages in the same atrocities that define its enemies overseas? Or are we to allow the pollution of feminism to spread from state to state, aided by the supposed do gooders who tell us that the state sanctioned mass murder is necessary for the health of the women? No, we're engaged in a war for a culture, soul, and will not stand by idly as a new era of barbarism takes hold. We'll still take up arms, as we've against all of the repellent manifestations of liberal doctrine. A state refuses to respect and defend the inalienable right to life, but will introduce legislation to make them. We keep storm and exacerbate social tensions. I mean, like I said earlier, do, do, do you not see America in the past 10 years? Memo Salt Strategy. Below the strategy Colson and I have developed over the past week, it contains talking points uh, that I've tested with uh, Simulatrix. Simulatrix. It also lists statements, positions, and votes from urban liberals and their establishment backers who spook mainstream Americans. The general recommendation is one, we should sustain the anti establishment tradition in American politics. MPP politicians run on this. P.S. did this in 72 when she called the common man to stand with her against elitist backed mobs in the streets. Emphasize vicious attacks on P.S. by establishment media and disdain for average Americans. 2. We counter the embed with big business image to win over working class, historically de voters. This can be achieved by highlighting every example of radical excess from the liberals. P.S.'s opponents are like New York Times, Berkeley, and other. Chick liberal elitists who hate working people. They are degenerate extremists. Feature homosexual socialists, man hating women, livers, and others in allied publication. The work and rile these people, see college high school incident, and force public to identify the RDC with them, but better. Recent court actions re uh, executive orders can reinforce the image. While injunctions from New York and California are blows, we can frame this as liberal governors and activist judges on hacking on behalf of rich and greedy kingmakers. The liberal cabal is awaiting a war in America's soul, preventing PS from instituting common sense reforms to halt indoctrination and homosexual recruitment. As we fight courts, use every opportunity to make P.S. a woman of action, fighting for the common man. P.S. should sign EOs on camera, be seen as advising AGs on way to fight court actions, etc. Get P.S. to lead protests and to expose and force out liberal judges. Six, we cannot allow enemies to succeed in fraudulent efforts to portray them as honest citizens. There are threats to America's survival, of course. But, happy May! Happy, happy May. Ah, uh, really plus, not bad growth. Cutting it down, not bad. And then one, and the end of an arrow. And we'll see what that's like. But well, we don't believe in poverty here in America. Also, I did, oh uh, yeah, might have used consequence to get Schleffi, but let us pray. Vice President Anderson did not like visiting the residents. Since the inauguration, the space become colonized by Schleffis. How can he, he could hear them playing or laughing through the White House thin walls. Late at night, he could hear their family dinners. They were every day exactly at 6 p.m. all attended. Now he found himself seated among them at the president's invitation. At one of the table, Fred said grace, asking God to forgive the women tricked into killing her babies. The lawsuit and John and her brother took turns castigating the feckless politicians who had been cowed by the liberal radicals, and a voting against their mother's bill. Anne was quiet, hugging it all. The only person at the table who did not seem glum was the president herself, who remained proper and poised at the end of the table. Her calm and amid defeats unsettled to him. When the boys fell silent, Anderson forced himself to speak, so was Phyllis Schleffi. Now what? It's stern. There was a pause before the president spoke. I think we've just seen the lengths of the radicals are willing to go for the anti-family agenda. She forked a piece of meat, and for a moment, Anderson thought through the facade. Behind her demure was a, was, uh, demure smile was fury. But now they're in the open. Now the whole country sees how entrenched elites like Ted Kennedy are, not mere bystanders, but actively working to destroy our country. They've launched for a salvo, but will meet their next challenge. Uh... The abortions want to come out in the open? Fine. They want to stand with the liberals and homosexuals? That's fine, too. Let them all come out in the field. Let the New York kingmakers, the McNamara defeatists, the social workers, and all these uncut persons make their alliance known. Then the American family can know the stakes and who are fighting. Schleffi gave an awful smile. We'll win this war. We'll save the heart and soul of our civilization, our family integrity, and our ability as a nation to defend ourselves. Through God will win. Anderson, John Anderson stared at her dumbstruck. Then dessert arrived. Psalm 144, 1. And is that the end of that one? I think there might be some slight hidden content as well. Um, but that makes... Oh, hold the vote. Okay, so this is what it is. Home front, huh? Morning in America. Far away from Schleifer, from her family, from the White House, Representative Shirley Chisholm and her staff are staring at the TV on the screen. Walter Cronkite was announcing the failure of the FAAI and the National's protest of the Capitol. Middle class women screaming at the senators as they left the darkened building with branching signs that read murders, abortion kills nations, and also us. The White House had yet to comment on some of the antics in the street. That woman, said Shirley, as the newscaster's face vanished, replaced by images of the street clashes outside women's clinics and furious white faces. She shook her and scowled that awful good for nothing woman. Cronkite's voice and image was replaced by that of Jerry Falwell into Thunderous, who thundered a dark sermon about prostitutes and abortionists. Disgusted. The congresswoman rose from her chair and clicked out the TV. As the room fell into silence, the staffer cleared the throat. She's not going to stop, you know. She'll gather up her supporters and she'll try again and again until either she gets her way, even off, the images of the TV onto the room or burns down the country in the process. 
A congresswoman's quiet for a long time. You're right, she's not going to stop. And she's not going to be satisfied until people have taken everything from women, from women of color. It doesn't matter if it's abortion or birth control or any other right that we fought for. She turned around, which is why we have to fight for her with everything we've got. We're going to come to Washington, sit in our place, and take it. We're going to get work done. And I'm beginning to think that's the only one thing that can help us with that good, that good work now. Now the full attention of the room was on her. And every set of eyes there was hope. What do you have in mind, Shirley? An equal rights amendment, in which I want to see, double check, and see if there's anything else we can do about this for the bill. Let us pray. Now this is the one where it actually passes. The bill passes. Vice President Anderson did not like visiting the residence. Since the inauguration, the space became colonized by Shirley's family. He could hear them playing through the walls, of course. Six-year-old Anna and eleven-year-old Andrew. Then there were family dinners. They were there were every day at exactly 6 p.m. It was a private affair attended by the whole family. Now, he found himself seated among them, Phyllis at one end of the long dinner table and her husband Fred at the other. John supposed it meant to be a celebration, bringing them into the family after the corralled votes for the FAAI. And uh, as he, he helped serve dishes, Fred led uh, the family in praising Phyllis for slaving the unborn and speculating how long the liberals would delay the bill's passage with their pointless floor speeches. All the while, the president smiled, chewing her food like a cat might a cannery. Before I could start up again, John cleared his throat and I, uh, What are your thoughts, Phyllis, when this passes tonight? Well, it's a grand success, but only one, I'm afraid, and it will inspire the opposition. She forked a vegetable in her mouth, parenting school, parenting, marriage, schools. The liberals will go after all these things. They won't be satisfied until they force their alternative lifestyles down their throats. We need to act before they do. And as she gave the president a strange look as she ate, act? Oh, yeah, so the liberal battalions are on the warpath. They're medicating our boys with psychotropic drugs to force them to behave like girls. They're forcing children into the homosexual adaptations or adoptions. Before you know it, states will set up nurseries to prevent mothers from raising their own children. Most of suppression. She dabbed her mouth while with her napkin and gave a sweet smile that exposed teeth. You and I are both here to, put, to preserve the inalienable right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. What we've thus far achieved is just start. John was too surprised by the response, but the time the words returned to him, a servant had arrived with the dessert. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11. to Family assistance against the justice. Weekly man bar goes up. Probably gets worse, but, you know, whatever. Morning in America. Um, oh. The passage. Oh. Uh, far away from Schleifer, the family in the White House, Representative Shirley Chisholm and the staffers sat staring at the TV. On the screen, Walter Cronkite was announcing the passage of the FAAI. A sound from the drone of his voice and occasional sob all was silent. That woman, said Shirley, as the newscaster's face vanished. Replaced by images of street clashes outside women's clinics of fire and brimstone sermons. A followed eye of the activist shook her head and scowled that awful good for nothing woman. Cronkite's image was replaced by the beaming Jerry Falwell, disgusted. The woman, Congresswoman, rose from her seat and, of course, clicked off the TV like we read earlier. As the room fell silent, our staffer spoke in a voice barely more than a whisper. She's not going to stop, you know. It's like, Walt, there's always going to be something for her to go after, just something for her to attack in the name of family or morality. It's just. She really said, you're right. She's not going to stop, and she's not going to be satisfied until people have taken everything from women, from women of color. It doesn't matter if it's abortion, birth control, or any other right that we fought for. She turned around, that's why I would fight over everything we've got. People like her, people like us, didn't come to Washington to sit in our places and take it. Well, came here to get work done. Now, the full attention on the room was. Uh, on her and every set of eyes was hope. What do you have in mind, Shirley? An equal rights amendment, like we read earlier, too. So we'll see about this. I did have to use consequence for this as well to find the events. Um, I'm not sure that's actually possible, but we usually get an event saying here that's the end of everything here. But, you know, I guess we'll take one more look to see what else we may or may not have. But maybe not. It was against Shirley's executive order. <clears throat> Uh, in a historic and far-reaching decision, the U.S. Supreme Court permanently blocked President Schleife's executive order to deny funding to states that refused to promote a patriotic and traditional curriculum, education curriculum. In a decision authored by the Chief Justice, the court castigated the President, writing that the administration did not even attempt to show that Congress authorized it to withdraw federal grant monies from jurisdictions that opposed the President's political programs. In her excruciating remarks, the Chief Justice further faulted the administration for not recognizing Congress's exclusive control over the power of the purse. President Schleife responded to the ruling by making an unusual appearance with pro-family protesters outside the Supreme Court. Surrounded by a visibly uncomfortable Secret Service detail, the President exposed outrage and judicial activists on the court. He wanted to do everything in her power to protect the average American family from socials and homosexuals with a personal animus against their founders' constitution and Judeo-Christian civilization. The President's remarks incited an assembled group of supporters to chant for the impeachment of the Chief Justice. Several were arrested by D.C. police after skirmishing with a nearby group celebrating the overruling of the executive order. <clears throat> Donna Allen, fourth grade teacher in the Flat Bush neighborhood of Brooklyn set down the newspaper with a feeling of unease. While she and other teachers at her schools had hoped for the order to be overturned, word that would hurt schools already underfunded by the state. <clears throat> Something about America has seemed to change in the last few months. People have grown angry and more violent. Schleife was riling people up, and sooner or later, something was bound to break. You've lost the battle, but not the war, Madam President. Well, we will. See. Now the Supreme Court upholds Schleife's executive order. In a historic and far-reaching decision, U.S. Supreme Court officially upheld President Schleife's executive order eliminating the federal funds provided to states who refused to mandate a patriotic and traditional curriculum. The plaintiffs failed to demonstrate that they had suffered a concrete and particularized injury that was either actual or imminent, or that loss of funds satisfied Article 3's standing requirement, wrote the court in the major majority opinion. 
A decision was a victory for the Schleif administration and a defeat for the liberal state leaders. Today's Supreme Court ruling is a victory for America and its children, said Department of Health, Education, Welfare spokesman Anita Bryant. The court has upheld its clear authority of the president to promote common sense, age appropriate education in this modern age where public morality is being assaulted from all sides and Americans are being taught to hate the country by liberal elites. It's essential that the president has power to act in the interest of its people. In a statement to reporters outside the White House, President Schleife added that the ruling demonstrated the laws on our side against the radical malcontents in California and New York. Protesters took to the streets in major cities as a ruling. Donna Allen, fourth grade teacher, of course, read this as well uh, in the Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn. Couldn't read any further. She said the newspaper around this table and began to cry, already to earn another black majority schools are strapped for cash, or that there were fights over textbooks and school supplies. The number of federal funds coming in seemed in inevitable that there'd be no further there'd be further cuts and layoffs. While the cultural war rage would be her, she and her students who would suffer. Congratulations on your victory, Madam President. The president smiles and plots her next move. Which now, after we did all that, we did both basically on the save. Um, I'm not sure there's gotta be something else next, right? Okay, we might be spending a little bit more on nuclear spending too. Let's we'll see. Um, you find a eulogy for the Kennedy president, Kennedy administration. Former President Robert Kennedy made his first official White House post uh, today. So if you've heard this before, if you wanted this, please go ahead. A brother, piece of last. Um, also, I don't think this is fully bug free because I did find one or two other events here um, in the save file that had nothing in them. So there's there might be more stuff planned for Schleifey. I think they're just teasers for 1972 presidents, but. I'm not entirely sure, especially since usually you get the event saying, hey, this is the end of this content for now, um, but that this, this, might, this might be it. So, um, other than that, I think that might be it, potentially for Schleifey. Uh, it's interesting to see what Schleifey would have in store for her. If you like about her, please go ahead right there. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oop, there you go. Like I didn't say, I had these consequences together because I went from a very successful RFK run to get Schleifey. And about half the country loves her, so. Uh, but with 4% poverty rate, but other than that, I think I'm going to end it here. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great, great, great yearly surplus, Schleifey, rest of your day.